Hey everyone, welcome to Gall Hacks. I'm Jeff Schantz, and in this hack, we're going to add some color to our LS output. Now, not only does adding color make things look a little nicer for you, but it can actually help you to work more efficiently at the command line because you can easily distinguish between files, directories, and various other elements in your LS output. Let's get started. So, to add color in our LS output, we pass the option dash dash color to LS, where color is spelled the American way. Wait a minute, that didn't do anything. That's because the default version of LS on Gaul is the one that ships with Solaris, which is the operating system used on Gaul. Now, Solaris was last released in the year 1772, and at that point they didn't have color monitors, so there was no need for LS to support color output. Fortunately, the systems group has installed another version of LS developed by GNU, which does support color, and it's available in user local bin. So if we type that and we add the dash dash color option, we now see that we get some color in our output. As you can see by default, directories are listed in blue, our regular files are in gray, executable files are in green, and symbolic links are cyan. This way, we can easily identify the various elements of our directory structure. So this is great, but of course we don't want to have to type user local bin ls dash dash color every time we want to list the current directory. So we need to create an alias. An alias allows us to map one command to another. So for example, if I wanted the shell to print goodbye every time I typed hello, I could set an alias by typing alias space hello space echo goodbye. And now when I type hello, you can see that it actually executes the command echo goodbye, so it prints out goodbye on the screen when I type hello. So, we'll apply the same concept to ls by typing alias ls user local bin ls dash dash color. Now whenever I type ls, it will actually execute user local bin ls passing it the argument dash dash color. However, aliases only persist for the current session, so we have to take our alias and add it to the hacksrc file that we created in hack0 so that it will automatically be set up for us every time we log in. So I'm going to copy my alias command here, and then I'll type vim.hacksrc. Using my arrow keys, I'll move down to the bottom of the file and I'll press O to enter insert mode on the next line and maybe we'll add another blank line here. But actually I'd like to copy that comment block that I added up here for hack 1. So I'm going to press escape to go back to normal mode and then I'll move my cursor to the top left corner of this comment block and then I'm going to press V to enter what's called visual mode. Now using the arrow keys I'm going to move down and you can see that as I'm moving it is selecting the block for me. So once I've got the block selected, I'm going to press Y to yank the text, in other words, to copy it into Vim's internal buffer. Yanking takes me out of visual mode and back into normal mode, so I'm going to use my arrow keys to move back down to the bottom of the file, and then I'll press P to paste the comment block that I copied, or that I yanked. Now I want to change the text of the comment, so I'm going to move over to this one here, and I'm going to press capital R to enter what's called replace mode. Now I can change this to hack2 ls colors. And I'm just going to press escape to exit from replace mode back to normal mode. And I'll just move my cursor over here and press X a few times to get rid of those other characters. Great. Now I'm going to move down to the bottom of the file and once again press O to open up in insert mode on the next line and we'll just add one more blank line and finally I'm going to paste my alias command. Now all I need to do is press escape to go back to normal mode and then save and quit by typing colon wq. So our ls output looks nicer and is perhaps a bit more helpful to us in distinguishing between various elements of the directory structure but can we customize it? Well the answer is yes so let's take a look at how to do that. The colors in our ls output are controlled by the environment variable ls colors. We can specify colors for directories, files, executable files, and so on using these two letter codes. Once again, I'll post this information on the Gallhack site, so don't worry about memorizing it. If we wanted to set our directories to green and files to blue, we would use the setenv command to set the ls colors environment variable, and we would specify di for directories, 
along with a color value of 32, which is green. We would then specify that files have a color value of 34, which is blue, and notice that we separate the two elements with a colon. In addition to the various elements in the list we just saw, we can also style files of a given type. So, if I wanted all my MP3 files to be displayed in red and text files to be displayed in orange, I can use star.mp3 equals 31, which is red, and star.txt equals 33, which is orange, and once again, we separate the two elements with a colon. As with prompt colors in Hack 1, if we have multiple color values to specify, we separate them with semicolons. So for example, here I'm specifying that directories should be in bold, which is value 1, and the text color should be red, which is value 31, while the background color should be light gray, which is 47. So all of these color values are separated by these semicolons. As you can see, we have quite a few options available to us in the realm of colors, and you can play around with them to see what you like best. One thing to note is that while the value of 5 is supposed to produce flashing text, it does not appear to work on Gaul. Alright, let's try customizing some of the colors in our LS output. I'm going to go into my hack2 directory here and we'll type ls to see what we've got in here. So we've got a bunch of pictures, mp3 files, we've got a text file, some directories, and let's say that I wanted all directories to be yellow and all mp3 files to be purple. So to do this I would type set env ls colors and then in quotes I'm gonna say di equals 93 which is yellow and then a colon to separate two elements and then we'll say star.mp3 equals 95, which is purple. Pressing enter and typing ls, we can now see that my directories are in yellow and my mp3 files are purple. Now, I happen to like the ls colors used by the distribution of Linux that I use, and I'm going to paste in that color scheme. It's fairly long because it supports all sorts of different file types. It colors all archive files in red, so you can see here like a zip file is in color 31, which is red, uh, a tar file is 31, and so on. So all of the archive files are in red. It also colors all images in purple, so we've got JPEGs here in color 35, which is purple, GIF files, BMP files, PBMs, and so on, all in the same color and also audio files are colored in cyan so it supports all sorts of different audio files as well MIDI, FLAC, there's MP3 and so on. So typing LS here I see that my images are now in purple my audio files are now in cyan my archive file here is in red along with my directories in blue my regular files in gray executable files in green and symbolic links in light cyan the last thing I need to do is add my ls colors to my hacksrc. So I'm going to type cd with no arguments to get back to my home directory, and then I'll type vim.hacksrc. Using my arrow keys, I'm going to move down to the bottom of the file, and I'll press O once again to enter insert mode on the next line. Next, I'm going to paste my setenv command, the very long one, and press escape to exit from insert mode and back to normal mode. Finally, I'll type colon WQ to save and exit. Alright, that's the end of Hack 2. Hopefully you find working at the terminal a little less dreary now that you've got some color in your LS output. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>